Hey, this is Dennis. It's Friday. Want to get back in the Word. Um, it's another day to walk with God. I'm not perfect. I'm trying to do my best. And I think when I yield to God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, that they're able to mold me and make me in. I see where he's making me a much better person. But am I perfect? No. But I know one that was perfect, Jesus Christ. And I put my faith in him and in him alone. Well, let's start back in the book of Matthew. It's chapter 5. We'll pick up with verse 31. It hath been said, whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. So all of this is red letters, Jesus talking. So he's saying, if you're going to put away your wife, get a divorce, write up, give her a written, you know, let him give her a writing of divorcement. So basically, you write it out. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. So to me, this is saying, if you do, Jesus is saying, if you do put away your wife, except for the cause of fornication, it, to me, that would mean if if she's betrayed the marriage and had sex outside the marriage, it looks like it's Jesus saying that'd be okay. You know, if she's been unfaithful, you can write a letter of divorcement. But if it hasn't been for, you know, having sex outside of the marriage, then to do that, is causing her to commit adultery and whoever marries her to commit adultery. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oath. And I don't quite understand this. I think it's saying don't be swearing as we read on. Don't be swearing by heaven or earth or what have you. But he says, perform your oaths that you've made to the Lord. I guess promises you've made to the Lord. You ought to perform those. But don't be swearing. So we go on verse 34. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it's God's throne, neither by earth, for it's his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. And I think Jesus is the great king of Jerusalem. Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou can, cannot make one hair white or black and I don't really understand I guess back then somebody swore by their head maybe they took an oath but let your communication be yea yea nay nay for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil and I guess out of verse 37, what I would say is that there's been a lot of times I've been confronted with situations since I've come back to the Lord that I found it was more simpler just to say yes or no. Yes or no. And don't even go into explanations. You know, um, does no. Um, I know I worked at the food pantry there at the church for a while 
and um, for about three or four months. And then one day they just up and decided they uh, they said, Dennis, you got to wear a mask. And I said, No, I'm not going to wear a mask. And I just left it to that. I didn't get in an argument. Um, I didn't pitch fit. I just said no. I said, hey, God bless you. Always been fun. I went to the house and ain't been back. So I think Jesus is saying, you know, maybe that's the best thing a lot of times to just say yes or no. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that you resist not evil. Now, y'all need to pray for me on this one. Because, uh, and even I'm before Jesus Christ, I say, Jesus, help me on this one. Help me to understand that. Um, I can see if some evil person is robbing me. And they say, give me your wallet. Be like, okay, here's my wallet. Um, give me your shirt. Well, you give me a shirt. But, you know, we had to, there's been times in history you had to resist evil like uh, Hitler. I mean, we just couldn't let Hitler do the things he was doing. And I don't think God expects you to let an evil person come to your home and you rape, rape your wife and your children and kill them. I just don't think that. Um, so I pray for God's wisdom on that. But Jesus says, resist not evil. And somebody's calling I'll just get back to that. I need to start turning the phone off when I'm going to do this. It'll shut up here in a minute. There we go. Um, and if it does that again, I'll just go over and I need to start putting all the phones away. So... Pray for me on that one. I mean, we'll see. But whoso, but Jesus goes on, goes on to say that whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And I can see and understand. And I know back when I was in my early 20s, I had a great uncle uh, there in Milton, Florida. He was a preacher. And uh, Reverend Lee Peden. And I went to the church, and I don't know why I was thinking about this very verse right here. And I said, Uncle Lee, I said, What do you think about where the Bible says to turn the other cheek? He said, That's right. He said, Jesus said to turn the other cheek. And if somebody slaps me on my right cheek, I'm going to turn to him the other one and tell him you got another free one and after that your butt's mine. So I see what Jesus is saying here, but we ought to turn the other cheek. But what if some evil person just comes up and just goes slapping the tar out of you 15, 20, 30, 40 times beating on you? Um, and y'all pray for me on this one. Uh, I'd have I'd have to fight back, and I think I would have to go along with Uncle Lee. I mean, there's going to be a limitation on how many times I'm going to let you slap me around. So if I'm wrong on this one too, <laughs> y'all pray for me and help me. Um, I understand what Jesus is saying. It's not normal. That's the loving, respectful way to respond. But I think there's a limitation to that. 
and I, I don't want to lead you wrong. If any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. So this is also almost like turning the other cheek. It's like somebody takes you to court and they sue you and they take away your coat. Jesus is saying, give them your cloak also. A cloak was something they wore on the outside. <clears throat> um, and I'm thinking that Jesus would be like, okay, you got my coat. Here's my cloak also. Let me tell you about the kingdom of God. You know, I think Jesus was foremost about the kingdom of God. And we need to show God's love. And like I said, I don't want to lead nobody wrong, but I think there's a limitation to how much we let Satan get away with. You know, we can't just let him rape us and kill us and run us over. So... God give us wisdom on that. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him two miles. Well, it says twain. So if somebody compels you, come on and go with me a mile, let's go with him two miles. Give to him that asks thee and from him that would borrow thee, turn thou not away. So that's quite understanding there. Give to him that asks thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. So Jesus saying, if anybody comes up and asks you for something or they want to borrow something, give it to them. And, and I think as far as Jesus is concerned, he ain't even worried about getting it back. Um, if they keep it, just let them keep it. But I could see where there's a limitation to that too, you know, so. Well, praise God anyhow. This is some deep stuff. Um, I hope y'all have a blessed day. And um, I pray that God will give y'all peace and joy and rest today. Amen.